Today we're going to show you how we automated the train to stop at the train station and to reverse direction at the end of the line. Like other people with small cities, we don't have space to run the train in a loop. And most train systems in real life aren't closed loops either. So to make it possible to control the train in our city, we added a Lego color sensor and some plates of three different colors to the track so that when the train gets to certain points on the track, it can figure out the right thing to do. First, we gathered all our supplies. Then we built the train itself according to the instructions. and then took a brief break to scrounge up all the AAA batteries in our house to get the four we needed for the remote and six for the hub. And now we've got the train working, moving forward and backwards with working lights. Sweet. We're controlling this with the remote control using the built-in program from the set. Now we want to automate the train to run in our city. We want the train to start at the station and pick up passengers, then run to the end of the line then we wanted to reverse direction and come back to the station to drop off and pick up new passengers, then run to the other end of the line, then reverse and go back to the station and so on. So in order to do that, we've added color tiles at each of the stopping points. And we're going to hook up the LEGO 88007 color and distance sensor, which is $13.99 US on lego.com to sense these colors and do the right thing. You can also use the LEGO Mindstorms color sensor if you have one, which comes as part of the 51515 Robot Inventor Mindstorm set, which is expensive but fantastic, by the way. Out of the box, the train comes with a two-port Powered Up hub. Powered Up is LEGO's newest system of Bluetooth hubs, motors, sensors, and other electronic components mostly used in motorized Technic sets and city trains. These components can be programmed with code blocks using the LEGO Powered Up mobile app. LEGO also has a related system of components that are a part of LEGO Mindstorms, which are hardware compatible with the Powered Up components, but can only be programmed using the Mindstorms app. But all of these components can be programmed and automated with Pybricks. We're going to automate our train both ways, with Pybricks and with the Powered Up code blocks. So our hub, sometimes called the City Hub or Train Hub, only has two ports. Technic sets usually come with the four-port hub. One of our ports, the A port, is being used to control the train motor, and the B port is used to control the train's headlights. Both of these ports have control and power, so the hub's batteries power both the motor and the lights. So what we're going to do is take out the lights and attach the color and distance sensor. And then we're going to set up Pybricks on the hub. Pybricks is two things. One, special firmware that runs on the hub. And two, a web-based development environment that lets you program the hub in Python from your computer. What's really nice about Pybricks is that it's open source and it's actively being worked on. There's really good documentation and you can even read the code if you want to know more about how something works. One of the main reasons we chose to use Pybricks is that it lets us store a program on the hub's firmware so we don't need to connect our phone to load custom programs. So let's set this up. Pybricks is fully web-based, so you don't need to download an app. To set it up, you just go to the website code.pybricks.com. To install the firmware on the hub, you hold the green button on the hub, then click this firmware update button, and the firmware gets sent over Bluetooth in a few seconds. Okay, more like 30 seconds. Cool, now we can program it from here. So we basically have two entities. One is a DC motor, which is a simple motor, and one is a color distance sensor, which is our sensor. PUP devices is powered up devices. So first, let's make our motor run for one second and make our sensor print its color just to check that everything's hooked up. And then to send our program from the web browser to the hub, we make sure it's paired like this, then press the play button and it runs. Okay, great. So now what we want to do is write the basic control loop for our train. So basically what we want to happen is for the train to wait until it sees one of its three control colors before it does anything. So we add a Python function that keeps checking until it gets a color it wants. Great. 
So what we want to, the train to do is to start at the station where the control tile is green. When the sensor reads green, it should wait a few seconds to let passengers on and off and then run forward. Um, and it should run until it gets to the end of the line, which is yellow. When we see yellow, we should stop, wait a little while, and then reverse direction to get back to the station. Once we're back at the station, we want the train to stop at the green tile again. And then we go backwards again to get to the other end of the line, which is red. And there we stop and move forward again. And we do this forever. OK, let's see if that works on the actual train. Maybe for testing, let's make these wait times a little shorter. And then let's send the program to the train. OK, so the train is looking for green to start. So let's move it there. It works. And we can bake this program into the train hub so that we don't need to hook up the computer to run it later, like this. In settings, you can turn include current program on. Let's change the wait times to something better for our minifigs too before we bake it. So now that this is loaded, let's get this into the city and see if it works there. OK, so we've added the tracks to the city. And check out our first city update to learn more about our tiered city layout if you're interested. Now let's see if our train still works. Pressing the button on the hub will run our program. Cool. It seems to work. That's a relief. We were worried that the color sensor might not work well in our tunnel, which is pretty dark. But actually, it comes with its own light, so it can see what it's looking for. By the way, if you want to reset the hub back to the original LEGO train program, it's really easy. All you have to do is connect the hub to the official program in the Powered Up app. There's a lot more you can do with Hybrix, like you can make it run faster and faster every cycle, or you can make it stop for a variable amount of time instead of always the same amount of time, or you can make the control logic just much more variable. You can also do stuff like define your own custom colors by using the raw hue, saturation, and brightness values, which you can't do in the Powered Up app, which just has built-in colors. Overall, Pybricks is just much more flexible than CodeBlocks in the Powered Up app. You can do the kind of control we've added here with CodeBlocks 2, which looks like this for our train. But we found it really smooth and pleasant to use Pybricks. The documentation for Pybricks is great, and it supports a much broader array of devices and functions. But most importantly, you don't have to use your phone. If you do want to learn more about CodeBlocks, check out Racing Brick's documentation on his website or Brickistan's videos on automating trains with CodeBlocks. Both are linked in the description below. We also have a link to both the PyBricks code and the CodeBlocks program for our train. We did find that the powered up color and distance sensor can be unreliable sometimes, whereas the Mindstorm's color sensor was 100% reliable. The Pybrix code is almost identical, regardless of which one you use. And we have code for both in the description. Uh, but the powered up code blocks don't support the Mindstorm sensor. So that's our city with a working transit system. For our next city update, we're excited to show you some new buildings we're excited about, plus a new path design for the upstairs level. Thank you all so much for the comments you've been leaving. And let us know if you have any suggestions for the city, or if you have any questions about Pybrix or code block, because they are kind of inscrutable. And please like and subscribe if you want to see more LEGO! You can make powered up sensors do other stuff too, like you can have it play for Elise with the piano program.